Hey, and we're live. Welcome everybody hey. to the Expo live stream. We're talking about uh, Apple TV. We'll get started here in just a few minutes. We're letting people roll into the room. Um, while we're waiting, I was curious, uh, it, it, you can post in the chat um, if you've used Apple TV and what kind of apps besides the obvious like Netflix, Hulu, streaming kind of things. Be curious what kind of apps people are using their Apple TVs. Um, I'm pretty new to the whole ecosystem, so I'm looking forward to learning a lot today. Any, any particular apps you use on Apple TV a lot, Doug? Uh, the usual Netflix, um, <laughs> uh, the sports networks, ESPN, NFL. Um, and um, I'm also a fan, of course, Disney Plus and a few others. Nice. Do the sports apps have like, a, like besides just watching sports, like standings and stats and stuff like that you can browse on the big screen? Some of them do, yes. Oh, that's kind of appealing to me. I'm a big yeah. baseball stat head. A, a giant 50-inch screen with all straight baseball stats on it is kind of heaven for me. Well, it's funny. We were, you know, one of the one of the big use cases. You know, people always think of TV uh, as the streaming video is the main use case, but you know, it's because of that big screen data display, including financial data display, is also um, a common use case. Bloomberg has a nice app, for example. Yeah, yeah. There's still a few like exclusive video games, I think, for Apple TV. Yeah. I was pretty intrigued when they first came out with like the Apple Arcade and like yeah. it was headlined with like Sayonara the Wild Nights, which I think is like narrated by Queen Latifah or something like that. Yeah. And it's like some crazy surreal wow. like racing runner game. <laughs> um yeah. and to this day I was looking up there was, I'm a big classic role-playing like Final Fantasy Dragon Quest guy and there's still an exclusive game that's a classic RPG called Fantasian that is made by the original creator of Final Fantasy that's exclusive to iOS and Apple TV so um if if I'll you don't convince that. me today to start developing for Apple TV maybe someone in the chat can tell me why <laughs> I really need to play Fantasian and then I'll go right out yeah. and buy one <laughs> yeah uh, by the way, just to let people know, we're still waiting for people to arrive and we're just basically talk, talking yeah. about we'll fun things regarding TV development. So uh, we'll give you give you a few more minutes. Yep, yep, just another minute or two. Yeah. I think the most um, I've done on my TV besides uh, uh, watching stuff is play Crossy Road. Crossy Road's pretty fun on a big screen, especially with kids. Yeah. I actually I found, a 20, a 40, I found a 2048 clone for the TV and oh, you can just nice. use the, the swipe with the remote control and move the little tiles around and uh, oh my you know, goodness. can get addicted to that. So that was fun. There's a lot of like, if you go to an arcade now, a lot of stuff is like classic games on like bigger screens in yes. different ways. Like there's a, a Space Invaders that's just like the little like individual LED light yes. bulbs. Um, so that's that would be like another cool use case. Like these things are they take on a totally new appeal when you can put them on a platform like this. Yeah. One of the first things I did uh, when I first started working on React Native for TV was um, that there was a uh, 2048 example for React Native that somebody had already built. And I modified it to work on TV with just the arrow keys, no no touchscreen needed and things like that. Oh, it turned awesome. out because, because of the way that particular game works, it was actually a pretty easy easy thing to to move over nice all right so it's uh about three after so we're gonna get started today welcome everybody to the expo live stream um we are here today i'm keith and i'm here with uh expo developer doug louder and we're gonna be talking <laughs> about apple tv today um we're gonna be talking about how to develop uh apps for apple tv with expo um we're gonna be talking we're gonna have a few examples that we're gonna go through, uh, building an app from scratch, and then also a more in-depth uh, example that Doug has put together that shows some of the distinctive things you wanna consider as you're uh, building uh, an app for Apple TV. So Doug, I'll let you, I kinda of introduced you, but I'll let you introduce yourself. Tell us what you do here. Um, well, I've been at Expo for, I guess, almost two years now, which it seems amazing now that I'm thinking about it. Um, back in 2016, I did the uh, Apple TV port of React Native uh, as part of a project I was working on at another company and uh, merged it to the uh, Facebook, uh, at that time, Facebook core repo. 
Um, since then, it's been broken out into its own uh, fork of the main React Native project. And I'm the, sort of the primary maintainer of that project. And as part of what I do at Expo, one of my goals here at Expo was to uh, try to deliver TV development that works exactly the same way as mobile development does on Expo and just make it exactly as easy to do TV development as, as it is today for mobile development, uh, where you can spin up a new project really quickly, take an existing project and um, build out um, a TV app. So I'm gonna start by sharing my screen here. Cool. Yeah, real quick, um, if you wanted to take us through, since a lot of folks on the stream are, are not, you know, maybe are more used to doing mobile development and we spend all the day on our phone, it's not always intuitive what kind of apps we might do on TV. So I wonder if you could um, talk about some of the use cases why you might want to make an app on Apple TV. Um, yeah, let me uh, talk about some of those. We just talked, some of you may have joined late. Uh, we were talking about uh, streaming video which is obviously one of the main use cases for TV. And there are a lot of apps, including you know, very popular apps made by large companies that do that. Uh, there's financial data display, and there's other um, uh, use cases that you might not consider, uh, like uh, travel, real estate. And of course, um, the way Apple and Google have set things up, uh, the, um, the T the Android TV is very closely tied to the Android mobile operating system. And they both use the same Google accounts. Similarly for Apple, they both use the same iCloud accounts. So very often um, someone who's building a phone app will also build a TV app that works with the phone app and they can talk to each other. Uh, for example, uh, Apple allows these apps to talk to each other through special iCloud APIs. Uh, those are just a few of the examples, there are more. And of course, there's also games. There's a lot of games being made for, for Apple TV and for Android TV as well. Nice. Um, why, don't we, why don't we go ahead and, uh, since we're already sharing, let's transition into the first demo. If you wanna try to do what we're doing now, uh, the first place you should look is into uh, Expo Docs uh, in this doc called Building for TV. And I'm gonna actually go through that, uh, the, fir the sort of the first step, the quick start, um, and um, in addition to um, just building a basic app that, that actually works, I'm going to actually play, have it play video. Let's do that. And at this point, if you just do this, you will actually get our standard Expo template, and you'll get an app that you can build for mobile but we're going to do it for TV. So we're gonna use the with TV example. Okay, so now we have our video test example. It's got all the usual files in it. Um, and I'll go through the changes that the uh, that are put into this uh, TV uh, configuration that allow you to build for TV. But for right now, let's just continue. We're going to add the uh, Expo video module. And now we're going to um, copy some code. This is actually the uh, example that we give uh, for using the video module, it's straight from our docs. We're just going to copy this in. And you can see it just um, opens up a view and opens up a video uh, component and plays a uh, video from a stream. And now we're going to just, um, we're going to do something special in order to make sure that we can run on TV we're going to uh, add an environment variable. And then we're gonna do the standard thing that we do uh, in Expo, which is to generate the native code uh, using pre-build.
And we'll wait for CocoaPods to generate. As we all know, CocoaPods can take a few minutes to generate all of its files. Hey, Doug, well, well uh, CocoaPods is doing this thing. Oh, I just finished. Well, let me ask this question anyway. Yeah. Um, what are your options? It's a question um, about uh, if you if you not on a Mac. Um, so, you know, with with general Expo mobile development, you could be on, say, Linux and run a uh, development server uh, and then connect it to a development build. Does that kind of option exist for Apple TV development? Like, could you stream to an Apple TV from your development server on another platform, or do you need to have basically an access to the emulator to develop for Apple TV? Um, if you don't have access to the emulator, there are options. Um, for example, um, you can use EAS build to uh, build your app and then um, uh, for, for test flight, or you can build an ad hoc build and run it on real devices that way. Um, but um, all of the things that um, you would expect to have ES build, ES update even, uh, do work on TV as well. So you, you could build a development build for Apple TV and live work on your code like that, like you would with a mobile device. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, there's awesome. Currently, there is one exception that um, Expo has a feature called Dev Client, where it has a special UI that shows up on the app that um, allows you to um, load different, uh, different JS bundles. And that is not currently working on TV. But um, in terms of uh, a development build where you can do um, JS debugging, bring up the Chrome DevTools debugger, that all does work. Dev plugins, ah, okay. for example. Got it. All right. Um, now, this went very quickly, so you didn't really see what was going on under the hood. The reason that this is going to build for TV is because of a config plugin that we've developed. Uh, and I'm going to turn on some debug messagings and run this again. So you can see that see that this uh, debug, this uh, sorry, this config plugin is going to uh, log some messages here of what it's doing. It's making changes to the Xcode project, making changes to the uh, splash screen, uh, so that it will work on Apple TV, and it's making some changes to the Android manifest. Uh, it's adding uh, assets for icons for that icon. Turns out TV needs different set of icons. Apple TV needs a thing called brand assets. And this plugin takes care of all of that for you. So now we're going to actually run. And for this uh, exercise, we're going to run on Android. And I have a uh, Android device already running that's for TV. And I'm doing this live, and I certainly hope this works. I think you were mentioning, Doug, uh, earlier that um, the Android TV stuff kind of works already out of the box with, you know, it didn't need as many changes to make it adapt to the big screen. Is that correct? That is correct. Yeah. Um, once, once we get through this demo, I was going to talk a little bit about all the that and many other things that you do have to consider when building for TV. It is a different environment. Um, and there are a lot, of, even on Android, there are things that, um, you know, are not going to be there that you might expect. Um, Android is even more fun because there's um, Android TV that's not really Android TV provided by Google, but it's um, custom um, uh, third-party OS OSs where they've actually taken the OS code and rolled their own for their own TV, and it will not run Android TV apps. Oh, my. So now you actually see that um, we have our uh, Android TV emulator, and... It will actually play the video, and this is great, but this is not too great because it's running the, the video as if it was written for the phone because we just copied in exactly the example from, from, the, uh, from the docs that was intended for the phone. So now we're going to um, try to fix that. So this is a much better example that I created for this demo. And we'll switch this window. 
And now we'll change the uh, app code. And now we have a much nicer view. I'll just make this a little bit larger. And you'll notice that as I hit the arrow keys, you can't see that I'm, I'm using the arrow keys, but I am. Uh, different controls are highlighted. This is something that you have to worry about on TV that you don't normally have to worry about on, on mobile devices. And it's called focus navigation, where you use the remote control arrow keys or swipes on an Apple remote control to navigate around the screen. And as you navigate, different controls are highlighted. And we call that being focused, the same way you would focus a text input. And when you hit the return key or you uh, um, click the center button on the remote, the video will play. For this example, I created a little um, very simple progress bar. And so this, notice that in within basically five to 10 minutes, we have a TV app working, uh, basically using the same, uh, same flows that we would do to build a, uh, a new mobile app in Expo. Uh, so that's the end of the first demo. And we should, let's, let's take nice. some questions now. So, so one question I think we've kind of alluded to that, um, uh, and you mentioned some of the ways in which that you have to think about special things when you build a TV app. You've mentioned the sizing for the big screens and the focus navigation. Um, mm -hmm. What are the other things you have to consider when you're building a TV app that you wouldn't have to consider with a mobile device? All right. All right. Well, you've already seen that. Um, one of the things we have to worry about is, is sizing. Uh, for example, the, uh, the, the code that you're looking at now uh, uses the dimensions API from React Native to get the whole screen size and resizes the video for that. Um, you have to worry about focus navigation. Um, I'm gonna show a little bit of, uh, of that code later to show you what changes you have to make to take advantage of that. Um, there's no screen rotation. There are no touchscreen gestures, obviously. Um, in uh, Apple TV, there are quite a few other changes as well. For example, there are Apple TV has no web views and no web browsers. So React Native Web won't work. Um, there's no sliders, switches, daytime pickers. A lot of native things that you expect to see on the phone uh, are not there on, on Apple TV. Um, Apple TV also has a restriction about um, app storage. Uh, on the phone, you can actually store things permanently in the app sandbox and, and for example, in the documents directory. Uh, you're not actually allowed to do that on Apple TV. You have to use the caches directory and that can actually uh, go away when the app exits or when the uh, device resets. Um, we have some limitations that because things that we had not yet gotten to in terms of building features at Expo for TV. Uh, for example, there's no Expo router. There's no dev client, as I said before. Um, there's a few other Expo packages that won't work. If you look in our docs, we have actually listed um, most of the SDK packages and features that do work. So you should look there and we'll be updating those docs um, uh, as we build out more things. Um, and one very important thing, um, which I'm sure some people already know about out there who are, who are watching this. Um, so far today, we're talking about just Apple TV and Android TV. The TV ecosystem is not like the mobile ecosystem, which is sort of consolidated around just iOS and Android. Uh, there are a lot of very popular TVs that don't run Apple or Google. Uh, they run either custom Linux ports or WebOS or Tizen. Um, various things like that. And if you're gonna be uh, targeting all those things, you have to do thing, things in a very different way. Uh, we are gonna be looking at um, trying to support platforms like that using Expo web tools, because that's actually a very typical uh, way in which companies build apps for these other TVs as, as web apps. Uh, but those are all in the future where there's, those are things that are still in process at Expo. We got a good question from uh, Jesper. Can I run my mobile emulator at the same time as my TV emulator? So especially thinking about if you're testing like a, an app, a mobile, a TV companion to a mobile app, can you have both of those things up to test both contexts at the same time? Um, yes, you can. 
Um, I'll actually be hopefully maybe doing that today, even so. Uh, nice. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, well, let's not delay then. <laughs> let me just uh, see, for example, here is a um, the phone emulator and then the TV emulator. And they both run at the same time. And there's There's no problem. And of course, we can also run Android TV emulator at the same time. Uh, is there any other questions before we before we continue? Uh, uh, real quick, um, the, there was a question about since there is not Expo router support, um, I assume React Navigation is still supported inside of um, TV OS apps. Is that correct? Yes, React Navigation is supported. Reanimated is supported. Um, I'm, I'm actually going to be showing that next uh, in the Ignite demo. Oh, that's right. <laughs> that's built. That's deeply built into the template. So yeah. So even even though Expo Router isn't working at this point in TV, you still you can still have the identical in terms of the end user experience because Expo Router is built on upon React Navigation. It uses the same headers and stacks and all those things by default. Um, Expo Router is mainly right. a different way of expressing your navigation layout and code. Yep. The only thing I, I would say is that um, lots of uh, navigation paradigms that you would see on the phone, like um, uh, drawers and uh, things that require touchscreen gestures and things, probably wouldn't recommend those on TV. They make it make the app difficult to use, or might not really be make, make certain things not accessible. So, um, uh, but but the the ones the there are plenty of um, navigators that do work quite well on the, on TV. And I'll show a couple of those. Real quick, one more question right. in there. Does Skia work on okay. um, TV yet? Uh, that's a good question. I don't actually know the answer to that question. I will. I don't know that either. Um, Let's look that one up. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe someone out there does know. Yeah. <laughs> Try it out for us and let us know. <laughs> yeah, please. All right. Um, by the way, on the subject of um, on focus navigation, I want to uh, give a shout out to my colleague Yusuf, who um, actually has been doing a lot of the recent um, work in supporting uh, focus navigation in the TV repo. And he's a co-maintainer of the TV repo now. Um, and he needs this to work well because he actually is building TV apps uh, professionally. And I would encourage you to um, go to this um, article that he's written on Medium, which goes into a lot of detail about um, how focus navigation works, uh, about some of the special uh, focus related APIs that we built for TV, uh, especially the focus guide. And uh, there, there's a lot of advanced things that you can do with focus management uh, using these APIs. But I just wanted to make sure to not forget to mention that. Uh, now we're going to move to the second demo, uh, which is um, Ignite TV. Now, Infinite Red, which is a, a, a company that we, that we work with, uh, does professional services. And one of the things they do is they have a boiler what they call a boilerplate it's a cli that you can use to generate not a very simple app but a, a rather complex one that uses react navigation uses mobex state tree uh, uses async storage and quite a few other uh, apis uh, and it's basically sort of their starting point when trying to build a new app and i've ported that to tv and I'm going to show you sort of the process that was used to do this port. Uh, the first thing you do is actually, um, you actually start by, uh, is, the, is the text large enough for everyone to see here? Do you think, Keith? If you can make that a little bigger, that actually, yeah, be good. All right. Nice. All right, so um, you use their CLI to kick off a new, a new app. And this app will be configured for mobile. Uh, and I will actually show what it looks like on mobile first. And this is what it looks like. And it has a bottom navigator. And it has a, a side drawer navigator where you can um, 
click on things and drive to different parts of the demos. And basically they show all of the different uh, components that they have. They have uh, the based theme styling, they have internationalization, a lot of other things here. And so this is a good sort of uh, starting point to make sure that you've covered most of the features that you need when trying to support React Native uh, on a new device. So after that, what do we have to change? Now, the example that I showed earlier just took care of that for you because it's using a template where these changes have already been made. Uh, but if you're gonna start with a new project, for example, your own project, and you wanna modify it for TV, this is what you have to do. Um, we'll, we'll start with package JSON. Um, you have to remove the dev client if you have it in there because it's not supported on TV. Um, you have to change the React Native dependency to the React Native TV package, not the, not the normal React Native core package. Um, and then you have to add as a dev dependency, the uh, config TV plugin. Uh, if you're going to use um, Expo pre-build, uh, you're gonna wanna add this, uh, this section to your package.json to exclude React Native from uh, Expo's pre-build um, checks that make sure you're using the correct version of React Native uh, for, the, for this version of Expo. Um, other than that, it's the standard Expo dependencies, nothing else really changes. In uh, AppJSON, uh, you're going to want to add, a, add a, the config TV to your plugins. Uh, and actually that is the only real change you need there. Um, there's some other changes you uh, need to make if you wanna add things like brand assets, icons, things like that, we'll get to that. Um, and I'll just go through a couple more uh, changes that were made. Uh, for example, uh, for this for this demo, I use a uh, pre-release version of the React Navigation packages. Uh, they're working on a new version seven, and that version is going to have uh, a lot of con more configuration available to the bottom tab navigator. In particular, you'll be able they they put it to where you can move it not only to the bottom, but to the left or the right of the screen. And I added a feature, they've merged that already, where you can move it to the top. And I'm taking advantage of that here. Um, I have special buttons that have the focus handling I need. Uh, one thing I wanna talk about is um, the way that Pressable is used in TV. Uh, as many of you have used Pressable, the style uh, attribute that you pass in is, uh, you, is a function. And the function uh, actually has a pressed parameter. Uh, and so it can change the style depending on whether you're actually pressing the button with your finger on the touchscreen. In TV, we also have a focused parameter that will change the style depending on whether the pressable is actually focused by the focus engine. Um, and then um, for the tab bar position, um, I've got a platform attribute for TV called is TV. You can tell if you're running on a TV or if you're running on a mobile device. And if we're running on TV, we want to move that tab navigator to the top. Um, and I think uh, I should add that um, if you're going to use brand assets, and you probably want to if you want to successfully submit an app to the App Store, um, there's uh, some parameters that the plugin knows about. You just pass in as parameters, the paths to the assets that you wanna use. And the uh, config plugin will actually construct uh, the asset catalog that you need in your, in your, in your uh, iOS directory for you so that you don't have to assemble it by hand. All right, so now let's, um, let's run this thing. And rather than, we're not gonna go through the whole build like we did previously, we're gonna actually just download this thing from, from EAS. Let's go to our Ignite TV. And here is our uh, list of builds that we've done. And for this, we're going to do a development build. And before we start, since this is a development build, we're gonna start our packager.
And now that the package is running, we're going to open this build with Orbit. And it's going to download that and run it on our Apple TV. I'll make this a little bigger. And it's now loading from the packager. Uh, and you'll see a warning on top. Um, and it's warning you about the uh, issue with storage that I just told you about, that uh, persistent storage is not supported on Apple TV. Uh, that's a, you're only going to see that warning once after you start. Uh, and you'll only see that warning in development mode. But it's a good reminder that um, you have to worry about that on TV. Um, And now you'll see, uh, you can compare how the UI looks on the phone simulator and on the TV simulator. Um, That's really impressive for a we, few property changes you can, that Ignite but, load up like that on TV. <laughs> right, and notice that the uh, navigator that's sitting on the uh, bottom on the phone is now up on top. That makes actually the because because of the way that focus navigation works, uh, the typically the default focus is going to be on the top left. So uh, having the navigator like this at the top uh, just makes it easier for users. Um, notice that as we I'm going the right arrow now, and you'll see as as we hit the right arrow, these different um, top navigator buttons are being highlighted. And these are all things that um, that Infinite Red built, and they just work with no changes. And the drawer navigation that you had on the phone is now just there all the time at, on the left because the TV screen has the space to show that, and it makes uh, navigation a lot easier. And as we go th go through, we um, click on where we press the center button for one of these buttons, and then the uh, main part of the screen scrolls to the right place. Uh, we can show, right now we're highlighting checkboxes. So all this works exactly the way you would expect it to and want it to on the, on the TV, the same as it does on the phone. Uh, I think that's, um, was there anything? Oh, yes, yeah, so I wanted to show the, uh, the debug menu. So let's go. Now we you know that we have um, we have all these um, commands in the Expo CLI that allow you to open the debug menu and open a Chrome DevTools debugger. Those still work on TV. If I hit um, Command D, I get the same Dev menu that we do on the phone. Um, you can show the Element Inspector, but you have to be careful with that because. If you show the inspector on the TV, it sort of provides an overlay and you can't focus on any controls. Um, and then um, if I hit J, bring this over. You can actually debug and set breakpoints in your sources just the same as you would on the phone. That's it for the second demo. Any questions? Very nice. Um, there was a question. I, so you, you have the drawer. Um, Michael's asking a question. Does the drawer close on TVOS? So you kind of pin the drawer to the side of the screen persistently. I guess I'm, I'm maybe he's thinking about the like the UIs where you open a drawer, like in a lot of streaming apps, like I'm thinking um, Disney Plus or something right. like that. Yes, that works. You can absolutely do that. Um, I just, that's just not my preference, at least for, for this yeah, app. Yeah. But um, if you want to build your UI that way, for example, if you build this app without making all these changes uh, that, I, that I've that i made to the UI, uh, you will still get that drawer navigation and it will still work. It's just kind of hard to use because um, it's not easy to highlight the, the um, that sort of the hamburger, what we call the hamburger menu that, uh, let me just show that, this menu here. Uh, because of because of the fact that there's animation involved, it's a little difficult to highlight that properly on TV, and so I elected not to go that route and to go the uh, permanent 
left-hand menu instead. But uh, absolutely, if you left it this way, it would work. Is it? I, I'm trying to remember how that works on some other apps I've used. Like maybe sometimes they use the arrow. Is it possible to like contextually? I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm asking that right. Like contextually use moving over to a certain element to show the hamburger automatically. Um, yes. Um, let me just. Uh, I'm going to show a quick. This is. I'm just going to take a moment here. Sorry, I'm going deep, too deep into hamburgers here. I was really intrigued by that, though. <laughs> uh, this is this is a demo I built. Um, I didn't want, don't want to spend a lot of time on this. This shows a lot of the TV specific APIs. Um, but in the in the about uh, of this thing, you can actually enable showing of TV events. We have a thing called uh, Use TV Event Handler. It's a hook, and you can basically have a, a handler that runs whenever the user presses any remote, any of the standard remote control buttons. Um, oh, nice. Left, right, up, down, menu, you know, long presses are, are detected and things like that. So in fact, when I, when we were first talking at the beginning of this, I mentioned that I had um, ported the 2048 game. One of the first things I did when I started building React Native for TV and if you know the game, you actually use swipes to uh, move tiles around and combine them. And I just basically use this handler to do the same thing using arrow keys instead of swipes. Wow, cool. Yeah, so really that, I mean, that when you have access to all those buttons and, you know, yeah. these different, you know, navigation paradigms here, really, I, yeah. I can't think of a TV interface I've seen that you couldn't be, you know, replicating with this. Right, and since this is up, I'll just show this is a, this is a focus guide demo. The um, focus, what, what a focus guide is, is basically a way of transferring focus. It doesn't take focus itself. It, if you, if focus, for example, the red, the uh, sort of pinkish region in, in this UI here, if uh, you navigate from one of the top buttons down into it, it will automatically direct focus to button four. Um, and the uh, this uh, this focus guide here, this little blue one, takes uh, focus from this guy and directs it to button two, and the little this little one takes directs it to button three. So this is just a very simple example of how focus guides work. Uh, the way the way you specify the destinations for where focus is directed is through uh, view refs, and uh, there's a number of uh, demos that you can look at. Um, I have this. I have this as a repo up for available for people to look at if they if they would like. Awesome. It, one more question. Um, someone was asking about. Uh, Norfelt was asking about. Uh, does it work with SVG? I assume React Native SVG. And I guess besides answering that, if you know that in particular, um, like yes, in general, does. when oh awesome, like if a library, whether or not a library supports you know Apple TV out of the box or requires modification, what are the some of the general concerns there? that you know, make, might make a library mm. not work right now with uh, Apple TV? Well, 90% of the time, it's because they just didn't add it to their pod spec. Um, there's a very, you basically, if you uh, look for the platform, or if, if it just says platform, it just says iOS, then it's not gonna support TV. So if in the pod spec, you look, you make sure that it says platforms with a, with a, with a plural, and that both iOS and tvOS are are in that list of platforms that are in there. After that, um, now if you want to if you want to add support for TV, that you, fir you first make that change, then you start building your app, and basically you see what doesn't compile. Usually, um, it's calling APIs uh, that don't exist on TV, like screen rotation APIs, or um, using. UI controls that don't exist on TV, things like that. Um, there are a few other weird things that you have to, to worry about. We've gone through that exercise for uh, most of the Expo packages now. So if you're using Expo packages uh, in that list that's in our docs, uh, you're not going to run into those issues. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for showing this uh, uh how to build Apple TV apps with Expo, Doug. We really appreciate your time. Right. We appreciate everybody joining us on the live stream. One, 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 um, I, I did want to show, oh, sorry, I, I did, there's, sorry, there's one more one more quick thing I wanted to show, uh, and that is uh, how EAS build works. 
because we hadn't actually we we showed that you could do it, but we didn't show how. So let me just let me just show that very quickly. Um, and the way that works, let me uh, make the screen a little bit bigger here. And notice that we have uh, the usual development and preview uh, profiles. If any of you have used EAS Build, you've almost certainly seen these. If you want a TV profile, it's very simple. You just extend your other profile and just add your environment variable here. That's it. And uh, for example, we have, I'm gonna show, um, I'm gonna hopefully show uh, updates here. So let's do that very quickly. And this is a this is an updates demo that uses the uh, new JS API that was built for SDK fifty, and uh, we have we have th had this out for a while. It runs on the phone, great, uh, but this is it running on TV. And um, if we it has these options that you can do. We're going to have it check for updates very often, like every 10 seconds. And then we're going to publish an update that adds an image. And within a few seconds, we should hopefully see um, a dialogue on the bottom here showing that there's an update available. And there it is. We click that uh, with our remote to download the update, and then we launch. And there's our new image. So not only do you have um, the ability to build these apps yourself, but you can use AES to build them, and you can actually do over-the-air updates. Okay, that's it, Keith. Now I'm actually done. No problem. Actually, I was, um, we did have a couple more good questions. And since folks are asking good questions and still here, we definitely want to uh, answer as many as we can. So um, the first one um, was from Danny. Uh, do you have a roadmap available for your plan support with TV? Expo has a, a, lot of, a ton of plugins. Are you hoping to have 100% support with TVOS? Or what, what are the, what's the, uh, the criteria? Kind of for for support with TO, uh, TVOS in the uh, the Expo um, um, module ecosystem. We um, don't have a. I don't think we have a published roadmap for this. Um, I I'm an engineer. I tend not to make forward looking statements. So I'm going to leave let other people do that. But um, we uh, have a list of things that we're taking a look at. Uh, the first things we're going to look at are. Um, of course, Expo Router and Dev Client. Um, and beyond that, um, looking at any other uh, sort of missing pieces. Uh, one missing piece that I worked on, for example, this week, which we haven't talked about in this demo, is building your own uh, native modules, which is something that many of our customers want to do. Um, I just merged some changes that will hopefully be published shortly so that when you uh, create a new module with the Create Expo Module tool, uh, that module will automatically have support for Apple TV in it by default out of the box. Um, and that won't, by the way, that will not, those changes will not affect customers who don't want TV. They, they will still see the same features as before because it doesn't have any uh, dependencies on any particular version of React Native. But uh, we're just, we're sort of looking at all of those things that come up that uh, we might not have yet thought about. But certainly there's a number of things we have thought about uh, primarily Expo Router Dev Client. Um, we're going to be looking at um, seeing if we can improve support 
for building device builds and submitting them to the app stores for TV. Uh, right now, the, you have to you have to basically submit your credentials manually through the website or or through local credentials. Uh, so we want to improve that experience for TV customers as well. Um, to, nice. and now, in terms of now, one more thing in terms of whether we're going to ever support everything that's in Expo, I think the answer is probably no. Uh, but that's simply for the reason that there's a lot of Expo modules that are very specific for mobile devices and don't apply to TV at all. So, so there will certainly be those sorts of uh, packages that we're not going to touch, but uh, we're going to do what we can uh, to, to build out as much support as, as we reasonably can uh, to make TV development a good experience for all our customers. And it sounds like those initial spots that we're hitting really focus on some key things that that bring in parity, you know, with the rest of the Expo development ecosystem, like development builds for that seamless development experience um, yeah. with your local devices, uh, Expo router, so you can share your same routing code yeah. that you might be migrating to in your apps right now, uh, and Expo modules. I mean, I imagine yeah. a lot of TV developers are very much invested in kind of. In, of course, dropping down to the native code when you need to and building these custom, yeah. especially video interactive experiences. Mm -hmm. So right there, that should hit um, a lot of um, the big, yeah. the, the heavy hitters right there. And I want I want to emphasize again that you know we don't we don't have the dev client the UI, but in terms of development builds and debugging support, um, that's already there. The de the debug menu is there. Chrome Dev Tools is there for you. Uh, Hermes is fully you know that's that's the Hermes debugger. It's all there. Uh, works the same as on as on mobile devices, and dev plugin dev, the uh, the dev plugins that uh, has recently been released um, is there. For example, I tested it and made sure that the async storage dev plugin works with this uh, updates demo. So um, I've tested all of that. It, um, so the de there's a lot of debug support that's already there for you. It's just that dev client piece is not there yet. We'll we'll be looking at that. Uh, are you talking to Keith? Because I think you're muted. Muted. Oh, oh my goodness! I'm sorry. <laughs> I was at, I was talking. Um, yeah, well, I was just ask, asking uh, Norfeld's question here. Is Chromecast something else in this, or can we use that for Android TV development as well? Uh, I don't think that's actually a quote Android TV device, but I will I will look into that. Yeah, I think um, yeah we did get a, an answer in the chat. Now, now I'm thinking about it because I have had a Chromecast at one point. It's mostly focused on screen mirroring or, or streaming from one device to another, and I, I don't recall being yeah. able to run dedicated apps on it. So if you've got an an Android looking TV experience that can run apps or you know download it from a store, you're probably talking about something that's compatible yeah. with Android TV. Yeah. Cool. Well, we'll wrap it up here. Um, Thanks so much, Doug, um, for your time and showing us all the great things going on with Expo and TV OS support and really <laughs> Expo support for the TV landscape in general. Um, yeah. And thank you for coming. Thanks for your wonderful questions. Um, you can head to the docs.expo.dev um, to learn more about uh, building apps uh, for TV OS with Expo. We have another live stream coming up uh, that's going to be talking about Expo Orbit, which you saw a sneak peek uh, in the screen sharing here and, and how you can use that to launch to, uh, you know, all your devices and simulators and easily get your bills where they need to go. So that will be back um, at this time on March 12th. So stay tuned uh, for uh, invites and notifications. Subscribe to us on YouTube and you'll get advanced notice to head over to that live stream when it's happening in a few weeks. All right. Thanks, Doug. Thanks, everyone. We'll catch you later. Thank you.